Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about what to do if you need to find the area above a curve. So what that means is uh, the curve itself is going to be completely below the x-axis. So I want the area between the curve and the x-axis, which is above it. So normally what we've done is we've uh, calculated the area below a curve because we knew that curve was completely above the x-axis. Um, and so if I wanted to know the area from x equals a to x equals b, it would just be the antiderivative of that function that gives the curve from x equals a to x equals b. And that's because we're actually finding the area from the top boundary to the bottom boundary, knowing that the y values on the top boundary are going to be higher than the y values in the bottom boundary. So I'm bound by the top uh, by y equals f of x, and on the bottom I'm bound by y equals zero. So technically what I'm doing is I'm finding the area from the top function to the bottom function, which is f of x minus zero, top minus bottom, from x equals a to x equals b. So what happens when everything gets switched and now the curve is below the x-axis so that the x-axis now has higher y values than the function? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opposite of the antiderivative from x equals a to x equals b. And the reason I do that is because now the top boundary is y equals zero and the bottom boundary is y equals f of x. So if I do top minus bottom again, it's zero minus f of x, which I can call simply negative f of x. So here's an example. Let's say I wanted to find the area above this curve. So the curve is x squared minus 2x minus 3. I'm going from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So what you notice is that red curve is completely below the x-axis between those two x values. So I'm simply going to take the opposite of the antiderivative of that function. So first I find the antiderivative, which is 1 third x cubed minus x squared minus 3x. I plug in the endpoints, but then I take the opposite sign. And the reason I do that is because the antiderivative between those two x values is negative, and areas are supposed to be positive. So that means that my even though my antiderivative from x equals 0 to x equals 2 is negative 22 thirds, the area is positive 22 over 3. All right. Now, we've talked about what it means to find the area if a curve is above the x-axis and when it's below the x-axis. So we have different situations, different ways to find the area. But sometimes we have a curve that does both. So sometimes the curve is above the x-axis, sometimes the curve is below the x-axis. So how do I find the overall area? What I have to do is every time the curve crosses the x-axis, I have to start a new integral. Uh, so I may have multiple integrals that I'm dealing with. Okay, so in this example, I have the curve uh, y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 2x, and I want the area from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 2. So I notice that the curve is above the x-axis from negative 1 to 0, and it's below the x-axis from 0 to 2. So what I need is I need two separate integrals, one for each of those pieces. So I will find the positive antiderivative um, of that function from negative 1 to 0, and I will find the negative antiderivative of that function from 0 to 2. And that will make both pieces of the area positive, and as a result, the overall area will also be positive. Okay, so I find the antiderivatives. It is the same for both parts, but notice how there's a negative in front of the second antiderivative because it is below the x-axis. I plug in the appropriate x values into each one, and I simplify and I get an answer that is 37 over 12. All right. So what we've seen is, in general, what we're doing is we are taking the antiderivative. Uh, the endpoints are a left endpoint and a right endpoint. And the functions that are being subtracted inside the integral are the top function minus the bottom function. Okay. But what if neither the top nor the bottom is represented by the x-axis? So what if I'm not finding the area between a curve and the x-axis, I'm finding the area between two functions? So the process is actually the same. As long as you remember that your endpoints are a leftmost x and a rightmost x, and your functions are in the order top minus bottom inside the integral. So here's an example. I have two curves now. One of them is x squared minus 3x plus 2. The other one is negative x plus 5. 
And so I'm finding the uh, area between those two curves. Well, in order to do that, I need to figure out where the area starts on the x-axis and where it stops. So to do that, since I haven't been told, I am basically going to uh, set the two functions equal to each other and solve for x. And when I do that, I get x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0, which has solutions 3 and negative 1. Um, and so it makes sense even looking at the graph that the area is going to start at x equals negative 1 and it's going to end at x equals 3. All right. And so between those two x values, now I need to figure out which function has higher y values and which one has lower values. In other words, which one am I going to call the top and which one am I going to call the bottom? So it looks like uh, between negative 1 and 3, the line is on top and the parabola is on the bottom. So I will, inside the integral sign, put the linear expression first and the quadratic expression second, and I will subtract those. So now I have everything set up. I can simplify everything that's within the integral to get negative x squared plus 2x plus 3 and evaluate that between negative 1 and 3. Um, find the antiderivative, plug in the endpoints just like normal, and um, simplify each set of square brackets and get an answer of 32 over 3. So the process is exactly the same. It's just that uh, neither one of your boundaries is the x-axis. You've got a function as the top boundary and a function as the bottom boundary. So if you have any questions on that, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.